Hey, it's Mike Corey, Fearless and Far, and thank you for joining me on this Filipino adventure I have concocted for you today. If you're new to the channel, you're not gonna find videos about beaches or luxury travel or top five cleaners. I, I don't, I don't do it. I don't. What I do here is we do adventure travel. We find places that people don't normally know about, and we make ourselves uncomfortable. I feel no, I don't feel. I know. Philippines is one of the most unique countries in the entire world and what breaks my heart, YouTube, is that people only go see the beaches. The beaches are world class, I know. They're incredible. The white sand, the blue water, the palm trees, the bucos, the halo halo. That's all great, I love it. I, I, I can't say that I don't like it, but I feel if you're gonna travel, you wanna experience culture, you wanna meet people. How much culture is there on a beach? Not that much. So. Let's jump into the list and let's get a little weird. First of all, there's a video sponsored today. Trover is an app I've been using for the past six months that I'm in love with. It helps you discover the world around you. It's free, you can add locations to it, you can find locations around you, and you can have brand new discoveries just by flipping open the app. All of the locations I'm naming today, I've added into the app itself. You can check out my profile, you can see locations, all that kind of stuff. It's in the app store, and it's free. Okay, jumping into number one. If you go far north, in the Philippines. You'll find yourself in the land of the headhunters. And while there's no more headhunters left, I don't, th don't think so, you'll find a particular old lady who's beginning to get quite famous around the entire world and is probably one of the most famous ladies in the Philippines. Her name is Apple Wang On. She is a Kalinga tattoo artist, also known as a Mamba Batok tattoo artist. She is the last remaining true Mamba Batok tattoo artist. This is how it used to work. A man would cut off another man's head. He'd bring it back to a Mamba Batok tattoo artist and he would receive a badge of honor. A tattoo done with a piece of bamboo, a single pomelo thorn, like a grapefruit tree thorn, and pine ash. He'd have a design tattooed into his chest. The more tattoos he had, the more fame he had, and the more ladies he would have too. After a while, the ladies started to tattoo themselves because they thought it looked beautiful. Then, fast forward for a thousand years or hundreds of years, I don't exactly know, you have an entire culture built around tattoos. Also though, something that they don't tell you, and a risk that might not be as apparent, especially for male foreign visitors. <laughs> Also, up north in the Philippines is a spot that's incredibly unique. Another true Philippine gem that I don't think exists anywhere else in the world. It's called the Blue Soil Hills. When, we, when people go to Sagada, it's generally not for this. It's for something else that'll come up next. But there's a hike you can do called the Marlboro Hike to see sunrise. You can add on a quick other hike that's maybe an hour to see this phenomenon. So, I heard stories about magic and I heard stories about chemical dumps, but the most plausible story for me, knowing a little bit about science, is that there is copper in the ground. And if you have an old penny, a copper coin, it turns blue-green by oxidization. Oxygen eating away at the copper molecules and develops a patina, a funny fancy word for just a sheen of blue-green that goes on top of it. Though magic would be would be definitely cool, but unfortunately I have a hard time finding real, actual magic in this world. It's probably copper. It's probably one of the coolest things you're gonna miss if you go up north. Check it out. Well, that's it. That's it. The main thing people go see when they go to Sagada is the hanging coffins, which is our number three. The thing is though, while hanging coffins might not be that much undiscovered, I have to argue that point. Echo Valley is the most common spot to see hanging coffins. And if you go there, it looks a little bit like this. <laughs> Definitely not a quiet, powerful, pensive, mind-opening travel experience. However, that's not the only spot that coffin exists. When I went there, I asked a local guide, my friend Chris, is there any other spots 
that we can see hanging coffins? And he said, yeah, they're everywhere. And I said, well, damn, man. <laughs> Let's go everywhere. And so we had an experience like this. Going up there, I would recommend doing it this way. Just asking your tour guide if he can take you to different locations that aren't Echo Valley. There's just too many people there. Keeping up with the dark tourism theme, which will be a reoccurring theme in this video, is the sunken cemetery off of the Island of Fire. 1871, Mount Vulcan on Comegan Island exploded, dropping the surrounding land down eight meters, about 20 feet. Unfortunately for the town of Katarman, it was at the base of this volcano, and it also fell 20 feet into the ocean. The city was mostly destroyed, but the cemetery remained, and you can even go snorkel it to this day. There are two giant cross memorials there placed after the fact to remind us that there are bodies buried there. Not once, not twice, but three times. When they died, when the volcano exploded, and also by the ocean. There's nowhere else like this on the planet Earth. This is not the only unique graveyard in the Philippines under the ocean. Head to Coron, our next location. People often go to see the beautiful karst mountains, the lakes, the color blue. Oh my God, it's amazing there. Those places get very crowded. One place that does not get very crowded is the Warship Graveyard, found just a little bit farther west of the world-class island hopping. About 70 years ago, at the end of World War II, 110 Hell Diver bombers and fighter plates left the American aircraft carrier and went all the way over to find a retreating, a fleeing Japanese war fleet that was sheltered in Karom Bay. The Japanese believed they were out of the range of the pilots, but actually they were just on the edge of the range of these fighter planes. What they didn't know is the Americans had 15 minutes to blast as many holes in the war fleet as they could. And they did so with brutal efficiency. They are underwater cathedrals of rusted steel and they are an incredible experience to see. Okay, at this point it's no secret that I love the northern part of Philippines, northern Luzon. There are some incredible things there, but also if you go all the way south to Mindanao, damn guys, there are some gems down there as well. The first being number seven on the list, the Britannia Islands in Surigao do Sur, just north, I mean south, <laughs> of Shargao. These islands are incredibly unique, and I went there with the Fighter Boys last year. If you're not familiar with the Fighter Boys trip, it's, it's a bunch of expat vloggers. We get together and travel to locations in the Philippines that are brand new, for the most part, to tourism. I love those guys. Fingers crossed for Fighter Boys 3. The Britannia Islands hold some secrets, and they are world class, and they're worth checking out if you're down there. Matigo Falls is another gem you can find in southern Mindanao. This waterfall I still have daydreams about going back to because I felt like we only saw 10% and it was so incredibly beautiful. Not only the falls itself, but the people in the Arakan Valley. You can't catch me. And when we got there, we flew the drone up and realized, oh my god, we, we don't, we, we, we have to leave 
and we've only seen one of the probably 20 different cascades that make up this giant waterfall system and we have to come back. Oh my God, can we know it's gonna get dark soon? Can we stay? We can't stay, ah! And the road trip had to continue and I have, I have FOMO. I have the one that got away syndrome of this waterfall. However, there is another waterfall down there as well, on the island of Basilan. Basilan probably has one of the poorest reputations in Mindanao as far as terrorism goes. And while I can't recommend you do go to Basilan because that stuff still does happen, unfortunately, I can tell you to pin this one on the map for later when things seem to settle down. I was able to go with Kyle Kulas Jennerman of Becoming Filipino. We had a security team and we traveled the island and what we found was some of the most amazing world-class attractions, but unfortunately in a place that's not very accessible right now, especially for foreigners, whereas Filipinos can have a bit easier time there. Anyway, back to the point. This waterfall, just watch this. So that's columnar basalt, an incredibly rare rock formation found only in a handful of places around the world, the most famous being Giant's Causeway in Europe. This waterfall is one of the most unique things on the planet, so pin it for later and come back there in the future. Basilan might need a few more years to settle itself out. So number nine, torpedo boats. We were in Northern Samar, again with the Fighter Boys, and we found this place that had an interesting spin on sustainable tourism. This location in Northern Samar had an incredibly big problem with illegal logging. People cutting down the forest and putting these logs through these small, narrow alleyways of rock and stone to get them downriver to sell for money. The people didn't have very many options to be able to sustain themselves after, especially the big typhoon that hit the area in near Lete, so they resorted to things that were not so kosher. But what happened about 10 years ago is people stepped in and said, hey, how about we stop cutting down the forest, because it's bad, and we start using these boats to carry tourists in, because it's ridiculous what you do with these things. These are the rockiest boats, and they're, they're jamming them, like, I don't even know how fast we're going, way too fast, through small little cracks in rock, up waterfalls, getting drenched, thinking we're gonna fall out or hit rocks the entire time. So why not load tourists in there, freak them the hell out, and sell tickets? And that will pay more than the illegal logging would. It turns out it works that way. Well, we're almost done. Wrapping up the list is Filipino food. Listen to me. As a Westerner, I can understand the perspective of other Westerners calling Filipino food gross and weird. Thing is though, I have tried literally every single thing put on my plate in the Philippines. I've even sought out things that Filipinos won't eat in their own country and made videos about them. This is a tag, a pork dish smoked by village elders covered in mold and insects. While for the average Western palate, Filipino food is not normal fare. I have to tell you that a lot of it is really good. Dinuguan, chopped pig intestines with blood, is really good. Sisig, chopped pig face, fried up, is really good. Isao, chicken intestines barbecued on the street, it's, it's really good. Some food though, papaitan, bullshit soup where they squeeze the intestines out. And fry the and then boil it in the in the intestines. Do the poop poop water. Mm. Itag with the maggots and the. Eh. But whether I, whether the food's good or not is irrelevant because you can't deny the fact that Filipino food is some of the most unique in the entire planet. And when I travel, I want to try things I've never tried before. I want to try things that challenge me. I want to try things that make me uncomfortable. Serve with the love of a host who has put all day into making them, and oh my God, Philippines, you have satiated that part of my travel life.
my travel needs. Like I said in the beginning, Trover is a sponsor for this video. I've put all of these locations in the Trover app with a geotag and some more information, as well as in the description below, there's videos about all of these locations. So head to Trover or head in the description to check out more if you're interested in seeing any of these for yourself or just learning more about this beautiful country called the Philippines. Also, big love to my Patreon patrons. You guys make this channel possible. I don't always film the most regular stuff and often my videos get demonetized and often I film things that I can't put on YouTube because it's a little bit too much and it'll probably get flagged. I post that content on Patreon and you guys support me there. If you want to be a patron, check out the link below. I love all you guys. I can't wait to share more with you when feeling far. Experiences or possessions, I'll catch you in the next video and keep soaring dragons.